Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hoggle Mode and today on Hoggle Mode I am sick, I am back from Paris, I am feeling super lethargic and I have so much to talk about. So honestly, I look kind of a mess. It's fine, we're dealing with it, we're just gonna film our videos, get our shit done. It's very cool in here, but you know what? I wanna quarantine myself and I have no strength and I think that somewhere along my journey is cross-continental. I picked up a bug and I feel really sick and I know I have to film, so I'm doing it, but I'm doing it my way because I can. So yes, today I am going to be talking about the Chanel show, the final show that Karl Lagerfeld did. It was the Fall Winter 19 show. It was sad, I will say that. It was sad and you could feel the sadness there. But there's so much to talk about when talking about Karl Lagerfeld, my thoughts, going over everybody else's thoughts, and just talking about the actual last Karl Lagerfeld for Chanel show that has happened. So we should probably talk about Karl Lagerfeld dying. Now, I believe that he died on the 19th of February. I would be correct. So Karl Lagerfeld is probably one of the most famous fashion people in existence in the history of ever. I would say that he's more famous than Christian Dior as a person, not as a brand. I would say Christian Dior is a really legendary designer, but Karl Lagerfeld is much, much more well known in the mainstream sphere. So in that way, he holds more weight. So yeah, he's majorly important. He designed for his own brand. He designed for Chanel, Fendi. He used to work at Chloe. He used to work for all of these different other couturiers as well. The man was major. The thing is, he was not exactly a designer, but more so an illustrator that could sketch and essentially say, this is my idea, execute it. The thing is, he became extremely known in the 1980s for his big over-the-top reinvention of Chanel, his crazy sets, his beautiful clothing, his, you know, taking on of the Coco Chanel codes and making them young and fresh and new. He also designed the Fendi logo for Fendi. He went into Fendi almost 60 years ago and essentially brought that house into the world like he literally took this small little fur house and was like hey guys we're just gonna do this and did all this crazy shit and essentially turned the whole brand into this worldwide famous you know kim kardashian but chica cross brand it, yeah that was carl carl also in certain ways definitely made the idea of diversity in fashion much more visible. I think he was one of the first people to bring in models of color, and I don't just mean in the 21st century. Pat Cleveland, who was an American fashion model who experienced a lot of racism by brands, Carl in Paris kind of picked her up and said, here, like, come with me, I'll do it. And she walked Chloe shows in the 1960s and 70s. You know, that's major for those periods of time in that way. And he also has embraced a lot of celebrities. I mean, Janelle Monet, he's always been a big fan of. Rihanna, he, you know, had for a while. He's not just some Dolce and Gabbana, you know, we don't want Naomi, you know, racist in that way. He, he has, you know, embraced the idea of diversity from an early point in fashion's history. But Carl also has had a history of saying very not nice things. And I don't mean in the way where Carl Flores once asked him if he should send a cactus to Pierre Berger's funeral as, you know, mourning flowers. Pierre Berger was the partner of Yves Saint Laurent and Carl was friends with Yves Saint Laurent at an early age. And then Carl says that when Pierre Berger started dating and seeing Yves Saint Laurent, he changed, he was not the same person. So there's a lot of beef there, but that sort of like legendary fashion, know-how, knowledge and drama, like Carl was also even a part of that, which I think is a very nostalgic and legendary thing that you know we like to think about when it comes to the legacy of the fashion industry. But he said mean things in that they're racist or they're really fat shaming and gross and you know, as much as I love Carl, I also have to be honest, that's fucking wrong. And like, as I sit here and I, as I do these videos and as I'm constantly learning about people's struggles and people's, you know, lives and 
you know, the struggles that they face in that clothing is another adversity in that way. It makes people feel not great and even can't be worn by certain people. I think making comments that, you know, are saying about Adele and saying she's fat or like saying like she'd never fit my dresses or whatever. It's like, that's rude. Like, what the fuck? Philip Klein did that and I ripped him in a new asshole because he is a fucking asshole about that. And so Carl Lagerfeld, you're a fucking asshole. Like, that's not fucking cool. You can't fucking do that. I've heard that there are things where a lot of Carl's quotes are not direct quotes. He doesn't have Instagram. He didn't have Instagram. He didn't have Twitter, I don't believe. So a lot of these things were done in articles or in interviews. And some people have said that a lot of those things might have been taken out of context, might have been, you know, misconstrued. And I don't know if that's true or not, but as of right now, it's quoted as Karl Lagerfeld and there's never been Karl saying, oh, I never said that. You know, that's fucking gross and that's rude and that's wrong. And, you know, somebody like that in this day and age in the fashion industry does not need to be at the top of the fashion food chain. That's that's not what we need. We're moving, we're evolving, we're changing. It It's crazy how in the past four years, my mindset about everything that I've ever known, which is, tall, skinny, you know, straight, cisgender fashion model who's super hot and sexy and upper class and all these things. Like how that has changed and how that is no longer the narrative that we push or that we strive for or that we even consider. Those people are just one person in our many cast of fashion characters that I think we just as a human race are. So we don't need somebody like that, you know, being the thing that people aspire to be or aspiring to be with. And then Carl also said some Islamophobic things, which again, not cool at all. Like you don't need to throw other people under the bus because you're talking about protecting other people. Like that's not, no, you know. Say, I just wanna make sure everybody's cool and zen and we help everybody, that's great. That's what you as a fashion designer should be saying, you know? Go for the positive, not the negative. That's fucking disgusting. About everybody else, we in the fashion industry would be Oh, you're gross, you're fired, canceled, blah, blah, blah. And we, for the most part, as fashion people, have kind of all sat here and said, no, nah, Carl, R.I.P. Like, in the back of our minds, when we all kind of are like, yo, that's fucking gross. Like, he shouldn't be fucking saying that shit at all. So, myself included, yeah, I'm definitely conflicted about this. I wouldn't necessarily say that I have a, you know, great answer to it. Cause I am a mere mortal and I'm kind of still like, yes, Carl Lagerfeld, like, you know, you are great and are amazing and are all these things. I am ashamed to say that I don't know what to do cause we all love Carl. But honestly, in that way, I'm happy that Carl Lagerfeld no longer is working at Chanel because this is the moment that the tides are changing. Do I wish that the man had to die? No, but I also know that fashion is entering a new era and a man who was born before or during or in the middle of the Second World War does not need to be at the helm of one of the most known and iconic fashion brands. Like that's just the truth. It's just the truth. And you all, you know, might be mad at me for saying it, but I'm saying it. It's the truth. It's we're we're different people. We are. We're not the same as we were at that point and we need to like move on and you know, get with it. I love being nostalgic too, but like, have you seen our shit? It's a fucking mess. This whole industry is a goddamn hot mess and we need to get it together. I feel like I'm giving a TED talk today. Continuing on though, those things were gross. And so you have this man who is legendary for doing all of these things and being this real icon of this industry, but also he said these really, really awful things. And so people were really upset. People were like, yo, this guy is an Islamophobic asshole. This guy is a colonizer. This guy is a white supremacist. This guy is, you know, this super racist, awful human being. And it's like, he said all those things like, you it's true, you know, it's true. I wouldn't necessarily say, oh my God, he's a colonizer, but I understand like the viewpoint, you know, I get it. And it makes sense if you're gonna say things like that, that those things get associated very fast. So I've also been scared to make this video cause it's like, how do I deal with this? Like, how do I, you know, make this right as a white gay? Like, what do I do to say, you know, to give an honest discussion and really talk about this? 
So I'm being 100% transparent. I don't know what to do necessarily. Yeah, I think in a way, like, should we cancel Carl Lagerfeld the way that we've canceled people like R. Kelly and Michael Jackson? It's hard to say. It is. And like the, you know, art versus artist thing is really hard. Because it's like, it's something that you really truly love. And is for me personally, I think a lot of other fashion people is a really big part of your life. Something that you have really aspired to and something that you really hold dear and cherish and love. And it's like, do am I, am I gonna be able to just like put these all in a closet and say, nope, not gonna do that anymore. So in that way, it's very hard. And I think that's why a lot of fashion people are like, R.I.P. Carl, because it's a big part of our lives. And I think a lot of people that really love and cherish the work and the artistry of this industry, Karl Lagerfeld is a really big part of that. And so I think there's a lot of like grieving in a way. I think it's very silent grieving, but I think a lot of people know that he, what he did was not right and it was gross and he needed to go, you know? I think another thing though is Carl was very close to a lot of people and from all of the interviews that I've heard, all of these things, he was very close to the brand ambassadors. He was very close to everybody that he worked with. So that's almost everybody at Chanel. The people at Fendi, he apparently, you know, was on such a constant basis with. He would make dresses for little girls. A woman told a story about how she was like a young girl and Karl Lagerfeld made a dress out of cardboard or something like that for her. So like, he was a big part of people's personal lives, not only their like aspirational, you know, visual lives. So, you have somebody like Carla Delevingne, who was my Chanel girl, like my, like me growing up, like the Chanel girl that was the Chanel girl was Cara Delevingne. She walked almost the end of every show. Like she helped open that, you know, Chanel grocery store collection. Like she closed the couture collection when they were going down the stairs. Like she, you know, she was major. And you could tell that they had a really close bond and a very close relationship. And Cara, I think also at that same time was going through coming out and being from this upper class English family. And like, you know, there was some emotion to it. I was reading it and I was like, oh my God, God forbid you're from an upper class English family. Oh, but like, you know, people have personal troubles, you know, that it's hard coming out. Like I understand that kind of stuff. So, you know, that, and then like coupled with her and Carla Lagerfeld, it seemed like they're close. Like I was like, oh, well maybe he like helped her, you know? So in that respect, she's, this girl grieving on Twitter saying like, I miss Carl so much, blah, 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 you know? And people are like, yo, shut up. Like, stop grieving. He's an asshole. Like he blah, 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 blah. Like saying how people really felt because it's the internet and people are gonna share their opinions when you share your opinions and they're gonna share their opinions when nobody asks them to. I was reading that and I was like, I actually feel really bad for her. Like, I just can't imagine grieving a friend who helped you through a really, you know, tough time and something that maybe is more so like a grandpa than a friend. And, you know, then people being like, oh, you can't grieve that person. Oh, you can't grieve that person. Like, I understand the like not wanting to be like, yes, upholding this man to such a, you know, standpoint and putting him on a pedestal. Cause you know, that's not something good to do when you're saying things like that. The girl also is allowed to grieve somebody that she knew, like, you know, I think that that is something that none of us are, are really allowed to be like, actually, no, you don't get to cry about that. Like that I think is a bit fucked up, truly. I'm not condoning his actions, but I'm also not gonna like abuse his family and friends and be like, you can't grieve that person. Like, you know, everybody, you know, you should, if you don't know, you should know. But yeah, let's talk about this final collection, shall we? Let's, let's watch this collection and then I'll talk about it. Okay, so it's opening on this little ski chalet. It was very beautiful. The inside of the Grand Palais is always done up for Chanel. And so everybody was kind of anticipating what is gonna be the last Karl Lagerfeld show for Chanel. This is the last one that he worked on. Karl, obviously this season went for this like ski chalet, very fancy, fancy, like old school, you know, Oh, if we're going to a ski chalet, oh, we're so rich, oh yeah. Like, sorry, I have to stop doing German and like Dutch and all these accents. I'm sorry to the people of those regions. But, you know, it's fancy. Apparently one of the log cabins was like smoking out of a chimney. Like, it's a real goddamn production. It's like going to Disney World in France. 
and all the girls are standing outside all lined up in the looks so that you're already seeing the looks which i thought was a weird choice i will be very honest from what i understand there was a moment of silence before the show that actually happened so i think everybody kind of just like stood and paid their respects i guess that makes sense as to why the girls are out there but still just seemed a bit weird for a fashion show i know it's a different kind of fashion show but still fashion show Cara Delevingne walks out of the chalet gardenia and she walks down in these oversized tweed houndstoothy big fedora coat pantsuit moment and I kind of loved it I kind of thought it was beautiful the looks were majestic in a way and the most recent Chanel show was also really really beautiful you think that was couture yeah couture was really great and the thing is, the man sketched the clothes, but he knew what he was doing. When he did it right, he did it right. It's very serious. The clothes do look majestic. I mean, you know, Chanel does make a good clothes. I will be honest. I love the ruffles, although I hate if they're those double tied uh, Chanel sleeve ones. He was doing that for a while and I was like, oh, this is so gross, bye. And like even the way that the even the way that the coats are piped with a different tweed to like accentuate oh, it it is beautiful it's really beautiful. Maria Carla Boscono Bosconova whatever her fucking name is I don't fucking know. Um, you know she's walking. There are some nice pants too. The houndstooth is big. It's bold. It's beautiful. I do love it. can't say I love the piping there, but hey. I love the boots too. I have to say those little shearling boots. I, I'm a whore for shearling. I think we all realize that by now. Love it. Beautiful. Oh. I'm not obsessed with all the Carmen San Diego looking looks. I see the little Himalayan prints on there. I do kind of like that cape, but it's too much. And this is like over-designed central. Cara, love you, baby. But that was, you know what? <laughs> Enough with the experimenting. Thank you. Ooh, a lovely big long skirt. Nice to see that. And that looks a little bit Simone Rocha, wouldn't you say? A little sheer on top. Mm -hmm. I do love that silhouette, like the long slinky Chanel coat and there might be stockings or pants under it. Oh, it is nice. Definitely still pushing the envelope a little bit. You know, it's still trying to push forward ideas. I wouldn't necessarily say that they're, you know, the most innovative, but gotta give the man credit where credit is due because he didn't stop. He didn't just keep recycling like some other people we know. There is a real notion of subtle luxury, I think, with Carl that I wonder, are things so fucking ugly in order to like make people think, oh, you're poor and you have no money? Because sometimes those things look like the worst creations a thrift shop could, could create. But, you know, people would be paying a lot of, a lot of goddamn money for it. I love the little cardigans. They're so hot. Like, they're literally so hot. Like, I would rock the shit out of that ugly fucking cardigan. All right, I see why he does it. Maybe I'm, like, sort of into it now. Mm 
the Chanel tweed suits, a staple in every Chanel collection. If you don't have them, it's not really Chanel, is it? It definitely seems like these are the younger, newer girls of Chanel. This is the younger customer that they're looking to attract, the younger person that they really want to bring in and give the new styles. Whereas those styles might be for a more mature woman. This feels sort of cute and chintzy and, you know, what I think a younger demographic is looking for now. Mm. That is a interestingly cut jacket. Oof. Why am I seeing a little bit of Fendi? Why do I feel like I'm getting Fendi in here? That leather, the suiting with the leather. I feel like that's a very Fendi thing to do. No, I feel like this is sort of that sporty Fendi that we've been seeing recently. It's kind of sleek and chic. And now I feel like the Fendi woman is getting mixed in with the Chanel woman a little bit. I am so sick. It's disgusting. Oh God, why is that neon pink so pink? Oh, oh no. It's like Sherlock Holmes meets, oh, I don't even know, somebody scary in pink. It's like Sherlock Holmes meets Legally Blonde in the worst way possible. And Mariam Jockman, poor thing, I'm calling her out by name, is in this green jumpsuit and it doesn't fit and it's like girl chanel it's meant to fit what the fuck is going on uh, carl did do a couple of leather pieces in this motorcycle jacket so it seems like he's starting to explore the motorcycle jacket again for a little bit we have a chanel puffer coat that looks like ll bean at its most luxurious as in luxury luxury bean um, it looks terrible. It's so waspy. It's so gross. It's so bad. Those pearls look like pearls, if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. Ew, that was gross. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Those are a bit rough. Very 80s. Very, you know, the original Carl. The HKIC. The head Carl in charge. Um, and then you get these sort of very cute prints. They are like little skiers, which I love, but you know, it's hard to make those chic and Chanel, you know? And there's only one bodysuit. Kyra's gonna be upset about that. You know, the man is still trying to tap into the younger demographic. Then we get this sort of dark and stormy-esque moment. And honestly, the only thing I could think of was Eddie Slimmer who Carl was a good friend of and somebody that he really cared about. I actually know that Carl only wore Dior Ohm suits designed by Eddie Slimmer when he lost 92 pounds. So, you know, this one look, this one long cape look with the ruffle bib in a leather pant and a black bow, that is the most Eddie Slimmer thing I've ever seen. And this is not a look that I see as I look at these Chanel collections at all. To me, this felt like a real, like, hi, Eddie, here you go. This is for you. You ever think about maybe this collection is like Karl Lagerfeld's will? To everybody that he loves, he leaves something in this collection for them. Oof. The girls are here. It even looks like there's a little bit of like an Olivier Rousteau with this sequin black and white sexy jumpsuit. It seems like maybe it's like a, here are these people that I love and cherish and care about. It's in this collection. Oh, that is that a shearling coat? Oh no, that, that white silk coat with the wool 
lining. Oh, that is hot. Oh, baby, that's hot. These dresses, these short little skirts. And you know what? That that skirt might look like fur, but I think that's more of a mohair. And the thing is, I've realized even at Fendi, Carl essentially stopped using as much fur as he had. And essentially, they were experimenting with fabric in ways to make the actual fabric that wasn't fur look like fur. There's Penelope Cruz. Like, who knew Penelope Cruz was coming? But ah, I'm not gonna complain. She looks beautiful. Oh my God, her little like tan sunburnt nose. Oh, and then I saw the up close of this Kaya Gerber dress, the finale dress. I think this is the finale dress. It is beautiful. It's like, you know, stuck together, embroidered. It's beautiful. Oh no. Who closed the show? Is that Marie? Oh no, that's Kaya. No, it's not Kaya. I don't know. No, I don't know who that is. But again, this is this dress too. It's beautiful with the fur little cuffs. Oh, and the, oh, the neckline is in fur. It's beautiful. Like he's, he, the man knows how to make clothes, you know? Like they're not all great, but it's there. Oh, fuck me. That was beautiful. You don't like every single scene in a movie, but you know what? At the end of the day, you're still like, oh, that was a good movie. Now let's talk about this woman right here, Miss Virginie Viard. I'll do a video on Miss Virginie, I think, a full video so that we get a chance to talk about her more, but Virginie Viard was the design director of Chanel. Carl essentially did his sketches and Virginie was like, I'm gonna make it be done. So she would get all the cutters to cut the fabric and sew and to make the patterns and do the fitting, you know, she, that's her. She, she does that. She executes Carl's vision. So now she will be having her own vision and I'm going to be interested to see where it goes. And, you know, this is not a, oh my God, Olivier Rousteau to Chanel. Like, this is like when Alessandro Michele took over Gucci. It was like, who is this person? I don't know who they are. I don't know what they're like. And honestly, with Alessandro, it popped, it worked, it happened. So... Who knows, this could be a rebirth of Chanel. A re-rebirth of Chanel. And then everybody clapped and clapped and the girls walked out and yeah. Oh, they're holding hands and this is something that happened with Carl. This is a big part with Carl is Carl always walked out to say, you know, I'm here. This is me. That was a major part. He used to walk the whole set. And as he got older, you could see he was only walking and saying that he would only come out and say hi. So the fact that Carl isn't there, it's, it's major for a lot of these people that go to these Chanel shows every single season. It is. It's very major. And it's very major for these girls who Carl works very, very in close quarters with. They're doing fittings with him. He's telling them, you know, he's learning about their lives. You know, these people really, truly do love him. So that's why these girls are crying and holding hands and really remembering this man that, you know, they worked with and they had a good relationship with. And I think it's definitely sad for a lot of them. And so I feel bad for them in that respect. I wouldn't want anybody to lose somebody that they loved, you know? And that is the end of my thoughts on Carl Lagerfeld's passing and Chanel and what will become of it. I know it took a long time, but I wanted to make sure I did it right. It's not that I want Karl Lagerfeld to go, but I think for more than one reason, it was necessary that he did. And I think that luckily we will all be better and evolving into a new place without him. But I think it's necessary and I'm happy that it's necessary. So please let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments below. I really do want to hear and discuss and talk about it. I know it's hard for some people and I do apologize with that, but you know, it needs to be discussed. So yeah, let me know what you guys thought. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. So TTYL.